So I have some good news. I'm not really starting a new job necessarily. I guess that all depends on how you look at it. Currently, I deliver newspapers on what's called a carrier route. And as that position exists, it is a independent contractor type of position. But starting within the upcoming week, I will be delivering on a n different route entirely in a different city. And at that point, I will be actually an employee of the day as opposed to being an independent contractor. Doing this this way um, required some creative finagling because when I was laid out, laid off from the day, it was put in my contract that I was not allowed to ever be employed by the day specifically for any reason. However, they did pull some strings and they're going to let me take this route, which makes me a part-time employee of the day. The uh, benefits And by benefits, I don't mean like medical, life insurance, health insurance, none of that. I just mean like the upside of doing this job, which is going to be a little bit more than double the papers I deliver now. I'll be doing a significantly less amount of walking. Most of my customers will be tubes on the side of the road, so I won't have to leave my vehicle at all which is a plus, saves me time, enables me to get more papers through per minute, but also I'll be getting paid an hourly rate and getting mileage reimbursement. Dude, ride the gutter much? This will enable me to make a substantially larger amount of money. Right now, due to people going away on vacation, uh, people that have stopped for non-payment, etc., I'm now bringing home about $90 a week. That's it. And I'm spending between $40 and $45 a week in gas. So obviously you can see this is not, <laughs> it's not a very good deal for me to be working as I am right now, because um, I'm not making hardly any money. I'm less than half of poverty level for the state of Connecticut, which 12000 for a single adult in the state of Connecticut is absolutely ridiculously low amount to say his poverty level, um, that $12,000 a year is poverty level is based on um, you not owning a home, you should be living in an apartment where you can get rent assistance, uh, cash assistance, assistance with electricity and utilities. So. You know, the $12,000 poverty level in Connecticut is based on you living in an apartment and getting all sorts of government handouts on top of it in order to live. This new route will be paying me an average before taxes and before tips, averaging about $220 a week. A week. That is a huge bump for me. When I took the route over, I was making about 220 at the beginning every two weeks. The slight drawback to this being um, I don't know the area that I'm going to be in. Fuel costs 
should be roughly the same, but I'll be making substantial amounts of money more. On top of that, being an employee of the day, I get time and a half pay for holidays, which is an extra plus. However, for the day to cover their own sorry little butts so that they can continue to lay people off and give the people remaining raises so they can continue every so many years totally refurbishing the executive office floor so that they can use up funds because as a nonprofit they're not allowed to make a lot of money carriers which is what I was doing being a carrier has not received a raise in at least a decade and the carrier gets paid a pittance of what the day makes in addition to and what the day makes from home delivery, home subscription, is a pittance off of what they make for the retail cover price of the paper, which is $1 Monday through Saturday and $3 on Sunday. But because they have to operate a certain way, they couldn't give people raises, you know, because blah, blah, blah because they need to protect their bottom line so that they can give each other raises and buy nice new furniture and new carpeting and new wall. They actually have wallpaper on the upper level and brass plated fixtures and I mean, you step in there and it's like walking into a mid-range hotel. So they need all of us carriers to cover our butt a little bit more insurance wise or, uh, sorry not carriers but motor route drivers which is the position I will be having so I was a little, little hesitant about increasing my insurance coverage to meet their minimums for the position um, up until up until midnight I had Had 25,000, 50,000 coverage, um, and that would have pretty much covered everything I need. But the day had higher requirements for uh, for motor drivers having 100,000 and 300,000 coverage. So I was a little worried about what that was going to do to my insurance rate. So I went down to my friendly Geico office today and uh, I took off the useless roadside assistance. There's a padiddle behind me and that would be a high beam padiddle. I removed the useless roadside assistance because every time anyone has to use it in my family, um, there's mysteriously nobody who wants to come out and do anything so I dropped that and figured well you know the money I'm going to be making I can afford AAA so I increased my coverage for property damage and liability and amazingly my rates only going to go up about ten dollars a month so bully for me for having a good driving record because that jump was rather insignificant. I can easily eat the ten dollars and maybe thirty dollars more a week in gas when I'm going to be making I don't know, three times what I'm making now. So so I'm okay with that.
You did not stop, Morano. The day in their infinite, we don't give a F about our carriers and motor drivers mindset. And after I've explained to the man who will be my supervisor multiple times that this, this is the hours that I'm awake, these are the hours that I sleep, blah, blah, blah. Instead, in the morning, uh, when I'm done with my route, I have to go sit somewhere for a while and then go back down to New London for 8 a.m. so I can start the application process, which of course, it's it's basically a shoe in I mean, I know they're gonna hire me because I have the experience and the knowledge and I have the customer base and all the all the other carriers that have known me long enough would vouch for me anyway because a lot of these people have been doing this job for years and I've substituted for quite a few of them and they never have to they never have to call me and say, where are you? Are you coming to pick up your papers? You know, they know I'm dependable. I'm going to be there. I'm sitting there 99.9% .9 of the time. I am sitting there waiting for the truck to show up with my papers so that I can start my job. And I know my job and I do my job well. So basically the filling out an application is just for paperwork. It's just the normal paperwork procedures. It's all formality. It's guaranteed that I've got this position, and it sucks that it's going to happen right in the middle of November, shortly before Christmas tips start rolling in, but... Oh, your focus sounds like shit, dude. That thing sounds like an actual hoopty. <laughs> like a real honest to god hoopty. It's like running on two cylinders. <laughs> I would be embarrassed to drive that. <laughs> I mean I'd be embarrassed to drive a Focus anyway, but <laughs> one that runs like that. Uh. So I'll be switching over to the new route just in time to to rake in the money from the holiday pay for Thanksgiving, which will make me a little happier. I'm pretty sure that those of my customers that would be giving me Christmas tips would just as easily either hand them to Karen, who will be taking over my route on a temporary basis, my old route, or they'll mail it in to me. So, the ones that are going to tip me are still going to tip me no matter what. I would just pull the sympathy card for them because they expect me to fucking bend over backwards for the opportunity for me to do them a favor. Yes, it's making me more money, but they've had three carriers take this route and each and every one of them has quit. And one of them no started no call, no showing about four days into the route. And it's not, it's not the root that causes them to do this. It's, as you may have seen through some of my videos, it's not an easy job. It takes a special, you have to be wired a certain way to be up these hours and to do this kind of work. And to be willing to go out in the rain, in the snow, in the sleet, you know, every day. don't get a day off. You don't get to call in sick unless you have a substitute. And if you think it's hard enough to find somebody to do, the, to do the job in the first place, it's even harder to find somebody who can fill in for you. I'm the type of person that, you know, migraines, back pains, my ass is still going to be here to work. Even if I'm, like, coughing and hacking and sneezing and I'm still going to do the job, so it's going to help me a lot financially, you know, 
around, we'll, we'll be able to buy like halfway decent food again. And, you know, I'll be able to I'll be able to buy a new video rig so I can do my videos better. And, Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. So you know that new job I was just all psyched about? Yeah, just lost it. So, yep, back to working for fucking ninety dollars a week. If I'm to take the promotion, I have to find my own fucking replacement. So, that's it. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it. I just knew it. So, Craig lied to me. Craig lied to Karen. Craig lied to John. Craig lied to Bob. And guess who gets fucked in the end? Good old Andy. Every fucking time. It's always Andy getting fucked over by the world. People wonder why I'm fucking suicidal all the time. Well, take a look at my life. You know, I bust my ass, I do everything, try to do everything right, and I get fucked over by a bunch of fucking selfish little pricks. A bunch of salary motherfuckers. So I'm gonna find myself another job. And I may, may, just quit. That's it. I'm done. I'm so fucking done. I can't fucking stand my life. You know, every time something starts to go right, it gets ripped out from under me. I have to find my own fucking replacement after I've been transferred into a new position. Because somebody had to fucking lie to his boss. Lied to my boss. Made up a bunch of shit. Did, pulled some shady shit. Telling me one thing, telling somebody else something else, and neither one of them are true. In one day, I probably made more than I've made in the last fucking week. And I have to give it all back to the customers that gave me nice little going away presents. That light was yellow when you turn, and could you fucking turn any closer to me, dickweed? Nobody fucks you over like a fucking Democrat. It's fucking bullshit. Fucking go above and beyond for all my customers. and tired of being the fucking welcome mat that everybody wipes their dog shit covered shoes on. <laughs>